Jaws, I know, is very near and dear to your heart. What is Jaws and why is it so important to you? Okay, so Jaws is like my favorite movie of all time. I didn't see it until I was like 20, I don't think. Like I didn't see it for a long time, but like I knew about it, but I'd never seen the movie. And then- So like, your, your, your parents never showed you Jaws? No, they showed me, I mean, they showed me like Jurassic Park when I was five and I like had nightmares forever. And same with like Jumanji. I don't think I could have handled Jaws. <laughs> Like that would have traumatized me a lot. And I was already like super scared of sharks. And before I even saw Jaws, like whenever I'd go in the ocean, I would hear the music because I knew the music and I would just no, picture no. a shark around me. Yeah, it's so good. No, so effective. No. It makes me stressed out. And uh, but then when I saw it when I was 20, I had a dream that night that like I was like on the boat tilting down getting eat about to get eaten by the shark like quint at the end yeah. and it was and i i i owned a waterbed at the time so it was mm. very upsetting and but also like i loved it and it was like i feel like what really made me turn around and like even though i'm a scaredy cat i now love horror movies and i just, by the end of that year i feel like i was watching jaws like every night just to fall asleep which is so weird but i it's a comfort movie for me now and i watch them I do a marathon every New Year's Day. Like it was on one year and now I just do it. It's a great way to start the year. And I just, I, I can't, especially during the summer and shark week, shark summer is my opinion. I watch it way too much, but you know what? I can't get enough. It's just something about shark movies that, I mean, none of them come close to Jaws, but it's just, it started such a great trend. And I love this little sub genre of horror. I'm excited to talk about it. <laughs> I would agree. I don't think any shark movie does not come anywhere near close to Jaws. So why well, they never I, remade it. Renee, I know you spend a lot of time in IMDb. So what what's the synopsis? What's the plot of Yeah. Well, of Jaws? basically, uh this is straight from IMDb. Uh when a killer shark unleashes chaos on a beach community off Long Island, it's up to a local sheriff, a marine biologist, and an old seafarer to hunt the beast down which mm. I love. That's a great little tagline. But, you know, I know you told me that you like actually write your own when you describe <laughs> the movie. And I feel like pretty lazy that I don't do that. But also I just when I saw this one, I was like, that's pretty great. So I haven't watched the movie since I was a kid. And I and I, you saw I know when you were a kid, <laughs> my parents, they're not people that made me watch really good movies. They would mm -hmm. argue that they did but that's based off what they think are really good movies. Like I watched Braveheart when I was seven years old. So I knew what Prima Nocta was <laughs> as an adolescent. Um, good knowledge to, ha to have. I'm yeah. sure that comes in handy all the time. Yeah, it's it's really useful, especially on trivia night. Um, <laughs> so I know I watched Jaws, but I watched it too young before I could remember. I feel like you watched you it. didn't remember I, it as a kid. Like, that would I would have literally have had a heart attack. Maybe, I don't know. I just wasn't. You're not scared of the ocean? That doesn't scare you? No, though? I'm not. You're not I scared of the ocean? You don't know I what's don't... in there. Nothing. I mean, everything could be in there. Things exactly. you've never seen. But I don't live on a coastal city. We're fine. I'm not going to do it. That's the it. thing. I'm never going to do it. But it's like in my dreams, I'll have a dream where I'm like fucking in this situation, like a moron, which I would never. That's why my dad's always trying to convince me what? to go scuba diving. Come on, you're missing out on the ocean. How can you give it up? Are you like, are you kidding? I think I would give anything up to not eat, be eaten by a shark. You know, I'm, I'm perfectly fine not going in the beach. Last time I went to Hawaii, my sister made me like get on top of her, get on her back. And she like made me, she swam me out to make me feel better because I wouldn't <laughs> leave the shallow. And I was like, I'm really stressed out. And I let her do it. And I was like, at least I'm taking her with me if a fucking shark comes through. But that's the, that's the closest I got. And it was only also because I was drinking. <laughs> well, R Renee, in a horror movie situation, your default is to kill yourself. I'm so drowning in myself in the first scene of Jaws. Yeah, definitely. So anytime, you anytime a shark shows up, I'm drowning myself instantly. So it makes sense that in your dreams, you can't do that. So you have yeah. to live out the experience. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Because I know in real life that I would just take the easy way out. And it's like 100% I would. Like I was just watching The Descent and she like the last chick is left there and all the things are coming in and she's got this blade and she's like holding it up like, I don't care that there's 80 of you, I'm going to fight. And I'm like, just slit your own throat, bitch. I mean, how hard is that? That's going to be 10 times easier 
than getting ripped apart by fucking weirdo creatures. Are you kidding? The other scenes where they were eating people, I was like, dude, this is gnarly. I am not going that way. Same with the zombie apocalypse. I'm like, I'm shooting myself instantly. I just, I also saw the Anaconda again and Danny Trejo is in the opening scene. The Danny Trejo. Yeah, really young. I had no idea. He's like running from the snake. You don't see it. And he climbs up on top of this like really tall tower thing. And the snake's still coming apparently. And he has a gun. And I was like, oh God, what do you think you're going to do with that? You're going to kill it. And he just shoots himself in the head. And I was like, now this (laughs) is a movie I can get behind. My hero. Yeah, my hero. That finally I felt like really represented. (laughs) <laughs> like, like I felt like that, that was really cool. I've never seen that in a movie because people usually like will try and kill all the zombies coming for him. And I'm like, they can't fucking die, you idiot. Kill yourself. Why? What, I, I just learned that if we ever do like a Hall of Fame rankings of horror movie characters, Danny Trejo is in your Hall of Fame. He's in my Hall of Fame just for he's that. He's the one that yeah. just eliminated it, himself, I took himself out like, of the equation. I mean, it that's was, the Renee yeah, Award. That's Take my yourself award out of the equation. Best, best ever final person in a horror movie who dies instantly. Sorry, the opposite of the final whatever it's just it's it was it just felt very important to me and i was like wow i think i just always have missed the beginning of anaconda because i i would have remembered that that was amazing Changes nobody does movie. that in jaws and i mean come on <laughs> but no. yeah i want to hear what you think this movie is about i'm really glad that i rewatched this so thank you for choosing this movie because this movie's I'll awesome always choose this, this movie's movie. great my overview of the movie is a small beach town is terrorized by a shark or a greedy mayor or a crazy fisherman. Either way, the sheriff has to kill it or them to save the town. Basically. Yeah, they're all <laughs> fucked in the head for sure. All three there's of those a, characters. There's a, I don't know about the shark. He's just being a shark. But. There's a real competition of who the bad guy is in this movie. And yeah, like... Quint is a good guy, but also like he's a total like I really hate him once he like on purpose fucks the boat over. Like, what was your move here, man? So, Why would you want to get trapped here with this fucking thing? So Ray, <laughs> like, I've been, I've been waiting to tell you this. Okay, this has been in so my excited. mind. The hero of the movie is obviously the sheriff. Yeah, obviously, I love Roy Scheider in this movie. He's perfect. I think the bad guy of the movie is the mayor a hundred percent he's like every republican right now (laughs) oh i don't care that there's a shark out there that's going to eat everybody we're losing money and we need to make money it was a boating accident yeah it's like oh just lying about everything i mean have you heard this from the ghostbusters like the female version where kristen stewart is trying to warn the mayor of new york about the ghost thing and she's like don't be the mayor in jaws just leave (laughs) and i'm like yes because it's so true it's like a lot of politicians are fucking like that and the mayor is like the best villain because he's just a total dick and it's like fuck there's like a bunch of people dying (laughs) what are you doing like how many do you need it's just like an all i want these guys hung up by their buster browns for like spray painting (laughs) it's like he's ridiculous and I like that one line where after the, the second attack, mm-hmm. when everyone's on the beach and then they're in the hospital and the sheriff's like, you're going to sign this. You're going to do the right thing. And he's like traumatized. He's like, my children were on the beach. It's like, oh, no yeah. shit. Everyone was on the beach. All the children were on the beach. Hey, like, you know <laughs> what? There was a fucking guy in the water that got eaten because yeah. of you. Like, and I love when he's like going to that like family and he's like, go in the water. And it's like, yeah. okay, kids, let's go. And I'm like, why? Why would you? I don't care what political leanings or I need or support. I'm not fucking walking into any water where a kid just got murdered yeah. and we all saw it. Like, I'm sorry. I love it. I'm, I think I'm more upset though about the dog deaths than the kids. Honestly, if I could go back in time and save one of them, it's, it's Pippin the dog. I, sure. I want to come back to the dog death. Yeah. But thank God it's off screen. I do find it hard to believe that there would be a bunch of people on a beach. They're like, I want to go to the beach, but then it takes a politician to say, get in the fucking water like yeah like, like even even if there's something that happened they're well, like that's you shouldn't saying. go in the water like get five, in the water five minutes before that wasn't everyone at a town meeting 
screaming about how like my favorite line there's so many good lines in this movie that are just <laughs> yeah. so ridiculous but there's one where it's like when he's like we're closing the beach and then these are the beaches and then he's like the mayor's like only for 24 hours and then that person in the background goes 24 hours is like three weeks and i'm like who the fuck are you and what are you doing what are you talking about to be fair though like this is the same thing as fucking covid right it's saying we need to <laughs> shut things down and people are saying fuck you. I don't care. I want to go out there and get COVID basically. Yeah. I don't care. I want to go on the beach, but then, yeah, I don't understand why they're all like scared of it. I don't know, but I love that part. I love all the different fishermen when they're talking, they all have weird things. Oh, what? Like just weird fucking lines. I can't get enough of how like they got a lot of every man kind of people that it all feels like very believable for like a little yeah. small town. Like everybody's just very like very specific kind of person. I want to come right back to this conversation, but just so we don't get too far on a tangent, I want to finish my list. So the the hero's the sheriff, the villain's the mayor, the monster is the shark, is Jaws. Yes. Well, duh. Yep. This <laughs> Hot this, take. I, Hot take alert. That's that, I'm just speeding through it. <laughs> Quint. Quint. Captain yes. Quint is the scariest him. character in this movie. <laughs> He's nuts. He's literally he insane. insane. Like, yes. And this that, is what I was hoping you'd bring up because I, he's so good, but <laughs> also just like so fucking nuts. I'm like, is he just like that in real life? This guy died at like 50 years old because he drank and smoked so much. The, like only per <laughs> the only person that's close to that level of crazy, Roy Shiner's wife in the movie. Okay, yeah, I really like, have issues with her too. She, like, oh, wait till you see Jaws 4. She's in that one. And she's crazy because she's like, the shark's coming to kill me in Jamaica. And it fucking does. It's ridiculous. <laughs> she's so weird in that movie. And she has a romance with Michael Caine. It's the strangest fucking movie. <laughs> but she's like, oh, the kid, he's just in the boat in the water. It's like, oh, he's fine. And then she sees the book with the picture of the shark attacking a little boat. And she's like, <laughs> get out of the water. And it's like you didn't know that sharks would fucking attack boats like what do you what do you think like what just get him out of the water dumb bitch like how did <laughs> how did you did you just learn what sharks were like she didn't know i, I don't know i've been she meaning to me. ask you so the first scene of her is she's she's drunk while the husband is researching sharks and she's mm -hmm. like you want to fool around yeah and like so it's like, okay, our introduction to the character is that she's drunk. So clearly her character is an alcoholic. And then I don't think that's the case. Uh, I mean, I mean, she's at least crazy. Um, no, it's just that one. I mean, that one scene she is drunk, but the rest of it, I, I almost feel like they might have filmed the book plot and then changed it and maybe cut some scenes. Because in the book, I think she is an alcoholic and she's also having an affair with Hooper in the book. As someone who's not read the book. And I haven't read I the book. And I don't want to generalize. She's an alcoholic. Okay. The first thing we see of her. I trust your hot takes. She's an alcoholic. It's not hot. It's <laughs> very room temperature. Very it's, it's, the, it's the rule of cinema. The way we introduce <laughs> a character is who they are. Okay. Okay. So yeah. She's mm -hmm. a horny, drunk broad in the 70s. And I, <laughs> okay. Wow. And I like I this. So I support her. It's but, better than I think what she really is in the movie, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> She seems kind of annoying, but also like, I get it. You know, she should be fucking worried about him. <clears throat> Quint. The one thing that I wanted to ask you about is when the first shark attack happens, they say, we're going to shut down the beach for a day. And then they open the beach and they're like monitoring. The no, that's whole the thing. second one. That's after the kid. Well, after the first one, they cover it up and say it was like a boating accident. Remember? Sure. And believe yes. me, I am. Well, when they open up the beach, when <laughs> yeah, they that's open for up the, the July Fourth, and that's after the little boy died too. For the audience, Renee is a historian on this movie, so just like all. I think all if all anyone nitpicks. hasn't seen Jaws recently or a lot, they'll they're with me. There's a difference between seeing and studying Jaws. Okay, it's not like I study it on purpose. I just can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I can't. But, yeah. So yeah, when they open the beach back up and they're all monitoring and they all have the radios and they're doing the thing, but the main guy is on the beach because he's scared of the water. They have the fake shark attack and then everyone's screaming. And then like he turns 
and he sees his wife by like the snack stand and she mouth she mouths something to she him. She says, I've got Sean. I know all the words to this movie. Oh, that's what she says. And she points uh, to like the sun, but he's not even there. He's like way far down the beach. And the, the he's just like, yeah, whatever crazy. Well, whatever. She was lying because she was drunk, as we've established, <laughs> is her character. Yeah. I thought she said, I've got churros. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> no you, did you not do you not i have captions on for everything i watch just because no, it's easier this was a movie that i was like i should have watched this with the subtitles yeah you should there's a lot of things that i'm like i'm sorry what are they talking about <laughs> because it's also like from a different time this is 1975 they didn't really enunciate or make oh. sure that what they were i mean granted not that they do in all movies nowadays but i would say it, it's it actually better the audio editing is like turned up to 11 like everything everyone says i'm like is this adr are they I know, like you can are hear they it all really clearly recording the all the audio separately <laughs> probably i mean honestly this is like one of those movies that like when you hear about the production you're like it's a miracle that this movie is amazing because yeah. everything went wrong that could go wrong like and they it, filmed this all in cape cod too the crazy part is it might be the only shark movie that actually has been filmed on the fucking ocean. Like literally majority of them are all filmed in like a tank or somewhere else. You know, they're not really shooting in, well, the, in the exact location, which makes this movie just feel a lot more real, even though the shark is fake. Well, Renee, the, the, the reason for that is pretty obvious. I can't believe you don't know this, that sharks are notoriously hard to work with on camera. Okay. And I knew you were getting wound up to like say something to make fun of me. So I'm ready for it. But you're right. You're right. They are. I saw this, the real Bruce. That's the name of the shark, by the way. That's what they called him. He named him after Steven Spielberg's Wait, lawyer. His name is Bruce or the, the Bruce? The shark's name is Bruce. Oh, okay. I thought you said his the shark's name is the Bruce. Oh, and I'm no, like, sorry. That's his, awesome. his name is Bruce. <laughs> and I I saw the like real Bruce is what I was saying mm. at uh, Universal Studios. And I freaked out because it was still uh, like, I mean, it's like, it, I don't know why, but like there's a there's an image of like Steven Spielberg in black and white, like in the shark's mouth, like posing like as a joke from when he was directing back then. And it scares me. Like I couldn't even lay in the fake shark mouth because I'd be so terrified of the animatronic. Like, I don't know why it would freak me out, but it's freaky looking. It looks so obviously fake, but they don't show yeah. it so much. So yeah, well, it's that's, totally fine. It holds that's, up. That's the best part of the movie. But real quick, last thing on the on the wife. If they, <laughs> if they ever remake this movie, which I hope they don't, but if they ever do, um, cast Tony Collette to be the wife. <laughs> Totally her, right. Her in Hereditary, amazing. She was so good at it. Yeah, she um, totally could be. Honestly, that's a great idea. But it's funny because if you are inter if you like have so much to say about the wife, you should really watch Jaws two and Jaws four because she's in both of them. And <laughs> the cop is actually in Jaws two, and that's why I think it's the best sequel. It's really good. So wait, 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 hold on. The cop is in Jaws two, but with his wife, and then the wife is in Jaws four. Yeah. So the cop dies or well, or, did, by, or that does point, she leave him he, no he's dead at that point she says he has a heart attack because of the shark and i was like what and I'm, then the I, son I'm, gets killed by the shark at the beginning and he's like a police chief in fucking amity the youngest son it's all about the kids all the movies follow this family it's ridiculous it's like just, i feel like they missed the point we like the shark not the family the character of mike like the oldest son he's in all four movies the character not the same actor but like he gets recast every movie. In the third movie, he's played by Dennis Quaid and he works at SeaWorld with his brother, Sean, the younger one. And they work at SeaWorld and then they catch a great white and then its mom is Jaws and breaks in and now Wait. Jaws is in SeaWorld. Oh, sorry. I, the way you said that, I was like, they catch a great white at they do. SeaWorld? No, they bring it into SeaWorld. <laughs> okay. Sorry. They bring, it they, near, they bring it near. It's like one of, it's like a SeaWorld where it's like, it has this little gate that opens to the ocean because that's a fucking great idea. And then they capture Great White. It's this whole thing. And it's 3D from like the 80s. It's really bad. Oh, but Dennis nice. Quaid plays, it's like the two boys. And then in the fourth one, it's like the, the oldest son works in Jamaica doing something in the ocean, crazily. I would never go near the ocean if I survived any of these movies. And then the mom comes down there after the other son is killed and says the shark's coming for the family. It's like the Godfather or something. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to talk about a good movie today. So yeah, Jaws. we'll stick to just Jaws. <laughs> but just so you so, know, it gets crazier. Okay. So like 
rewatching this last night. It's been the first time I watched it in a while. I was expecting this movie to be a oh, this is a this is a fun older movie. Mm-hmm. This was a great movie. Like you Amazing. you you are you've been a hundred percent right with how with your obsession with this movie. Like I know I watched it. I'm like, I'll probably watch this movie in six months. Like this yeah. is a great movie start to finish it's it's amazing there's There's never a dull moment like if it's ever everything just works i feel there's very little fat in this movie yeah very little they cut out a ton of bad stuff from the book apparently because everyone says the jaws book sucks steven spielberg cut out all the bad shit which was that Hooper is like having an affair with Chief Brody's wife the whole movie throughout the whole story. And then the, the mayor, college kid is, is, yeah, is hooking up Richard with the Dreyfus. wife. Yeah. And I was like, Jesus. And then also like the mayor's being blackmailed by the mob. And that's why he's keeping the beaches <laughs> open. And then um, Hooper dies when he's in the shark cage in the book, because he's also like, I'm assuming because he's more of a bad guy in that one because he's cheating with the wife. And then Mitt. in the, the ending, they changed, thank God, because in the book, apparently, the shark is like coming for them and it just gets tired and dies. It's like it just <laughs> gets tired and fucking dies and its heart stops and it just sinks and that's it. And Spielberg was like, I'm sorry, but we have to change that. <laughs> and then the author got all upset, apparently. So I was like, that's fucking hilarious. I've never read it because of those those four things I just said are like, OK, yeah, I'm not. It's not like reading jurassic park by michael Crichton. that's still a great book it's like this is this is like the movie is it's one of the rare ones where the movie's a lot better than the book you you know how i know the movie is so much better than the movie i mean the book (laughs) you said the movie's so much better than the movie i loved it but yes the movie is so much better than the movie i didn't even know there was a book (laughs) that's what i'm saying i didn't didn't even know this was an adaption yeah i thought this was an original movie Mm-hmm. And the way you've just described the book, I'm like, glad I never knew that. It was like a <laughs> summer anything... like book that came out and like literally hit like, he, I don't know if they bought it like right as it like got popular. It was like a summer book and just when like when they were on stands and people yeah, would just yeah. see them and Airplane, actually just read it. Airplane books. Yeah. And then it got really popular. And then Spielberg like was brought on with Universal because they snagged up the rights really quick. Kind of like with, I think, Jurassic Park, similar situation. Well, there's a bunch of like studios fighting over it, but similar thing. Yeah. And they bring in the, the Spielberg. The he Spielberg. just nails it. The Spielberg. I mean, he's like a legend. I just obsessed oh, with him. Yeah, we're going to have to do a whole podcast just on Spielberg. I could do 18 podcasts on Steven Spielberg. <laughs> but yeah, I, I was going to ask you this actually about Jaws now that we're talking about it. Is Do you consider it like a horror movie after watching it again? Because it's kind of like an adventure movie, but I still consider it like a horror movie overall. Wow. I think I would consider it a horror movie in the same way that Silence of the Lambs is a horror movie. It's probably a thriller. But it's also like there's like a literal guy eaten alive on camera. I know it's fake, but I'm like, it's like pretty like graphic. It's like pretty that, disturbing. That was one of the things with this movie I was shocked by. When I started the movie, I'm like, this is a rated R movie. Mm-hmm. And then I see up in the top corner, PG, and I'm like, Get the fuck out of here. What? And then as I watch, I'm like, the whole time, I'm just like, this is a PG movie? I know. It's shocking. Uh, they they changed it. This isn't the movie that got like PG-13, but like, I don't know if that was around. Like, eventually they get there, but this at least should have been PG-13. It should have been R, honestly. But back then, there's a lot of PG stuff that you're like, wow, that's crazy. That, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, adjusting for inflation, mm-hmm. if... The Conjuring is rated R without any nudity or hardly any swearing or gore. Yeah. Jaws in the 70s should have been rated R. Yeah. Adjusting for inflation. Like, I was, when I watched it, I was like, this is more hardcore than some R-rated movies I've seen. The screaming in this movie is top notch. Top notch, great screams. Because he even mentions it at one point when he does the Indianapolis story. And he says, oh, then you hear that terrible high-pitched screaming and you're like yes because that's the most important part because it's like that's like a real scream I feel like it's not like a fake scream it's like that's when you know it's like real yeah and they really nail it they're just pulling it out of their gut well the chick in the first beginning part she's on like a thing a pulley system that's like attached to her and she's being yanked around and she did say that it like did hurt her 
and that uh, she was like it was easy like she's it wasn't like so bad but like there was a point where she was like it was pretty easy to like scream and stuff but then sometimes they were like oh my god we should probably stop it because she's probably upset but she was just doing a great job but uh, she did say it was kind of like uncomfortable and like hurt and it was kind of hard work and she's being thrown around so it was pretty easy to just start screaming yeah, I was like, that, yeah, I would, I would instantly be able to be in that mindset if I'm being thrown around the water. I would picture something underneath the water. Yeah, <laughs> that opening scene is great. Mm -hmm. It's it's so good. So good. The based, I didn't know that part about the her being hooked up to stuff and being pulled around. the The first thing that pops to my mind of somehow being able to relate to it is, I've I've gone skydiving a couple times, and when you pull the chute, mm -hmm. like your, your body gets yanked up and it kind of hurts. Yeah like attached to something and then like they're like pulling it over by the camera and they're like literally moving her around yeah. and i guess the original like storyboards had like the shark being shown and like jumping out of the water and getting her or whatever but it was like obviously they couldn't do any of that and it works 10 times better the the lack of seeing the shark is is the most incredible thing about this movie especially like thinking about it in the 70s but before we go to that topic because that's a whole subject i just I'm want sorry, to say I have so much to say no 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 so i just want to say this real quick opening scene the guy who is drunkenly yeah, so chasing the girl annoying. yeah dude's a legend okay <laughs> i mean lucky guy <laughs> they don't even say a word to each other they make <laughs> eye contact she runs away she takes he, chases, off. Yeah. he chases after her. she could be running in fear yeah and he's like she's down with it and then she <laughs> confirms that she's down with it so he's super lucky first yeah. off <laughs> and then even and, luckier 10 seconds and then, later and then he tries to take his clothes off as he's running he's just drunk out of his mind <laughs> and trips and falls <laughs> and then trips and falls and she's Survived. still on board with the idea she apparently is not she's, drunk turned on she, by the ocean i think more I think than him because she doesn't even realize that he's like still over there like dying <laughs> <laughs> i think she's turned out. on by drunkenness which is odd okay but he's not even like it's so bad the acting of being drunk oh, i'm not drunk hey it, like just it's the way the 70s. That he's doing it's it. the 70s oh, i understand but i this just is, have to point it out because it's just as I, every other every time it bothers me as but i, I love watching, that movie it's as i was watching this movie i'm like this is where camp was born like yeah. <laughs> it is totally like so he's chased after like trying to take his clothes off she gets in the water. He gets all of his clothes off, almost all of his clothes off. And then he is so exhausted that he just passes out on the beach. And she's re she's down to clown and I then know. gets eaten by a shark. And he's sleeping through the whole thing. Legend. <laughs> so he just wakes up in the morning there, right? And then he's like, oh, she just left. <laughs> the, and he the, just reports he gets... it to the cops because he's like, if I report it, maybe I won't be as suspicious. But then if I was the cop, I'd be like, he's like, hey, I reported it, didn't I? I'd be like, yeah. I don't know. Did you? Where is she? He's like, <laughs> what do you remember that night? He's like, oh, I, was, I was pretty <laughs> wasted. <laughs> I was, so I was good. Like, what? It's just like, it's so great. But yeah, I just feel like I love this movie so much. It's so good. I feel like I wanted to also tell you because you brought up Richard or Robert Shaw, mm -hmm. um, but him and Richard Dreyfus, like Cooper, uh, they didn't get along on set at all. So it like really worked for their characters because they like didn't like each other. But so there, I don't know if you remember exactly the scene where Hooper's like on the, the boat deck and he's like doing like something with the ropes and there's like a bunch of like water splashing up at him. Robert Shaw was like holding the hose off camera, like fucking spraying him like crazy, <laughs> like really hard and like all of like just in the face and like trying to get to him. And he was just always trying to fuck with him apparently on set and he would call him a pussy and tell him he had to like, if he wanted to prove he wasn't a pussy that he should climb the mast of the boat and like jump off. And I, Spielberg was like, no, like he will have to pay if he gets injured, like fuck. But I was just like, that's fucking hilarious because Robert Shaw sounds like literally Quint in real life is what I'm picturing. <laughs> and he did that whole Indianapolis scene wasted the first time because he thought this is going to be good because I'm drinking in the scene. And yeah. they wasted a whole day of shooting because he couldn't fucking do it. And so the next day he, he was totally sober and he nailed it all in one take. And I was like, that's pretty nuts. <laughs> That reminds me of some of the stuff from James Caan on, on Misery. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah same but, kind of a thing that they were just talking about. But, but yeah. I, I, <laughs> I feel like what you're saying, though, is 
it really just speaks to Steven Spielberg to use that because that's the whole kind of tension between those yeah. characters. It's great. Is, it's like old school versus new school. And then yeah. they have that that one scene of them showing each other scars and yeah. stuff. And like, I love that though. Here, see my leg. <laughs> it's like, are you guys going to kiss? This is. I'll drink is... to your leg. All right, yeah. so we'll drink to our legs. And then they sing that song and then he tells the Indianapolis monologue, which is just horrifying because it's true. Yeah, I see the documentary on, I watch it every year on Shark Week. It's incredible because it's so horrifying. I can't believe it. Probably don't have any more people who are still living from that. I would, I, I, again, that's, I drown myself in silly scenario. <laughs> so, I mean, on Robert Shaw, I said earlier, he's the scariest character in this entire he's movie. He's more unpredictable than the shark, I think. Like, <laughs> There's, that thing you know it's coming for blood, at least. There's so many scenes in this movie that, like, if I had not already seen it and kind of known that it's about the shark, even, like, three quarters into the way in, into the movie, I'm like, is he the bad guy? Yeah, there's like, really not a lot of shark. There's just, like, he says weird things. Like, what's that? You know this movie front and back. So what's mm -hmm. that one line he says as Here's they're to swimming with bow-legged women? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. With bow I was like... Who says that? And then he says, like, here lies the body of Mary Lee. She died at the age of 103. At, for 15 years, she kept her virginity. Not a bad record for this vicinity. And then he's, he's like, ha, ha, ha. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. And he said that the, to his wife. <laughs> he's the reason I was like, I need to turn the subtitles on. He's so, Oh, yeah, he mum he does. But it's, he, it's, it's like Peaky Blinders. It's like they're speaking English, but I yeah, don't understand but, a word yeah. you're saying. <laughs> I think this movie has one of the best like openings. It's like scary because it's a shark. No one can do better than it. But we should briefly talk about some other shark movies. If well, you want real to. quick. Or I before just, you get into uh, the next well, beca one. Because I know we obviously do research before we get into this. And looking at the, like if you Google shark movies and the movies that come up, it is shocking how far the gap is between any shark movie and, and Jaws. Very true. Good point. Because and they, they can't capture the magic. It's the same thing with Jurassic Park, I think. Plus, it's also fucking Spielberg. I mean, yeah. Spielberg's not directing, you know, Shark Night 3D, although that'd be it, sick. It, and it I would, do it like would be way Night. better. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, wait till you see it, man. <laughs> I mean, we're going to go through this list. I want to hear it. But I know right now the thing that's going to come up between all of them, the more it ages, the more Steven Spielberg just like seems like a genius. Mm -hmm. He didn't show the shark. The horror was not the shark itself. It was all the stuff around it. All the movies that were, that if you Google shark movies, the sharks look terrible. Yeah, because they they have to look terrible if, I mean, Deep Blue Sea at least had like some practical effects. I'll give them credit for the Requiem, the one that just came out this year, is the worst effects. It literally looks like it's the like a like the lowest budget I've ever seen. And that thing's on like Hulu. It's insane. Out of all the other shark movies, I feel like that's where they come into problems because when they're more modern movies, the like inclination is to use special effects. But then like there's also like older, uh, there's not really that many old shark movies besides like the Jaws sequels. And they all basically use the same shark, which is kind of cool. But I'm also like, these sharks are all the same mechanical shark fucking from the first one. Like the second one, it's exactly the same thing in Amityville or sorry, Amity Island. Again, it's the same thing, but just with teenagers stranded on their little like sailboats or something. It's so, the same kind of a deal, but the same shark. Then we get to newer ones and they all do like visual effect sharks. Only one movie on this list has real sharks in it. And that's why it's the best shark movie since Jaws, which is The Reef. It's Australian mm. horror film. And all of the shark footage is real sharks. And it's great. They don't show anything with like, I mean, they show people like with blood around them, like in the water and getting like pulled under. And like they show the shark coming to attack and like swimming right next to them. But it's like you kind of it's the same as Jaws where it kind of like lets you imagine that. But it has a similar plot to like open water where there's people, mm. their sailboat sinks and then they have to swim to the island they were heading to in open water for like a day <laughs> and a half in order to get it. And the shark slowly picks them all off one by one. And it's like really freaky. And it's so good because it's like a real shark. Right. The, the, the footage looks great. And the main guy who like knows the waters, he has like goggles. So he'll like look down and like use them to like look around on the the surface of the water 
And it's amazing because it gives you the same feeling as Jaws. That's why that's my number two, but there's definitely a lot more to discuss on this list. All right, Renee, you are the regular exclusive resident shark expert. So I know you've seen more shark movies than I have. What are your recommendations? There's a lot out there. What are your expert opinion recommendations? Yeah, besides Jaws, because none of them are going to be close to Jaws. But I'm also just like, I love this shark movie category. I could watch any shark movie, regardless of if it's good or bad. I've watched (laughs) a lot of them because when I was like, we're going to talk about this, I was like curious, how many of them are there? Have I seen any of them? So I watched a lot. Granted, I've seen a lot of the sci-fi movies, the Sharknados. I've seen all those, like a bunch of those. I stopped watching, but like, I just felt like they don't really count. You know, they're like fun, (laughs) silly movies. They don't really, they're not considered a horror shark movie. They're like comedies. After Jaws, my personal favorite is The Reef, which Mm. I already talked about how much I love. Shark Knight 3D, surprisingly one of my favorites on this list. (laughs) And you might make fun of me, but the premise is sharks in a lake because somebody put them there and it's a saltwater lake and they're filming the shark attacks via cameras on the sharks to sell to shark week fans because apparently we want to buy videos of people getting actually killed by sharks in 3d in 3d however pretty good graphics for like made for 3d back then in the in like Mm. the 2010s like piranha 3d again some of the the graphics you, look so questionable you have a because it's 3D. For Piranha 3D. I do, but yeah, that's just because it's it's similar to Jaws, but with piranhas. Uh, anyways, okay, Shark Bait just came out this year. Literally, the dumbest reason to ever be attacked by a shark. Is this granted, the is this the trailer you sent me of people yes. on jet skis and yep. they crash? They're playing chicken, <laughs> and they do it twice. And by the way, these aren't their jet skis, in case you were wondering. They stole these jet skis. They and didn't these, even rent them? No, they just stole them. They found <laughs> them. They broke. They literally had to break into a shed to get the keys. And they're like, it's fine. After staying up all night partying in Mexico for, I think they're there for spring break. Anyways, then they're stranded is, on a is, jet ski. The jet skis don't work and they're fucked. And it's this, hilarious. Is this the only movie on the list that the people actually deserve to get eaten by sharks? Oh, 100%. Yeah, I'm rooting for the (laughs) shark in this movie. There are some, I will say the only redeeming quality for that movie is that there's some really good kills. But Mm. you want everyone to die too, so you're like, okay. It is not that great and satisfying, but like worth a $3 rent on Prime, in my opinion. All Mm. of these movies. The shark's the hero. (laughs) It's, It's the only one. That's awesome. That's the only one, yeah. Maybe besides the Jaws sequels, I can't tell. Uh, but and then the shallows, another good one with Blake Lively. I personally really enjoy that movie. It feels Is like Ryan Castaway. Reynolds the shark. No, but the shark it has some good kills too. But it also like just behaves like so not like a fucking great white. And I don't know by the end, but it's kind of like Castaway for a shark movie because she's like stuck on this one rock. And there's a seagull hmm. with her that broke its wing and all this stuff. And so it's the actually seagull a good Wilson. Movie. Yeah, totally. Okay. Cool. It's kind of similar, but I don't think the bird dies, thank God. Mm. But um, yeah, so that one's good. I don't. It's not like the number one, but it's it, it'd be up there. There's there's a lot of really bad ones. So the Meg, I didn't like it. I feel like that's an action movie. Only Shark. movie on this list I've I've also seen, and I can't tell you a thing about it. I know I've seen it. You've seen I it. Can't yeah. tell you Jason Statham. He, he saw one, and now he has to come back. That's all yeah. I know. He does a lot of stuff in that movie. Uh, Rain Wilson gets eaten by the shark, which is just great. And he's just a weird character. Open Water, horrible. I fucking hated that movie. I mean, it's a scary premise, but it's literally a couple stranded in the ocean after their scuba diving thing goes away. And they just argue the whole time. It's oh, just I- them arguing. And then they don't show sharks. The guy gets eaten by a shark, but apparently we don't get to see that. And then the girl does finally what she should have done at the very beginning, taking off all of her gear and just dropping down into the ocean and drowning herself. That's exactly what I would done day fucking one when that thing doesn't come and get us at the end of the day. (laughs) I think I've seen that movie and 
Everyone I, did like back then. It was a huge deal when it came. I out. feel like that movie. I just watched it. Is like they've just been waiting around in the water for an hour and a half. I mean, there's just yeah, no action, and they rightly so. The wife gets annoyed with the with the husband because she's like, "You wanted to leave the group and go out to look at some weird thing. You always want to go do this and blah blah blah." And he's like. Well, we wouldn't be at this shitty vacation if you didn't have to work so much. It's like, I don't want this. I'm not watching a shark movie for this. I want the fucking shark and you don't even get to see it. And it's just, it's bullshit. So no, don't go see it. 47 meters down. I love that. I think it's a great one because it's scary. And that's another reason I'll never go in the shark cage. They ruin that for me. Mandy Moore, they're in the shark cage. It drops to the bottom and then they're like stuck and they're running out of air and the shark's trying to kill them. It's like crazy. After they had just chummed all the water, so there's blood everywhere, and she's like stranded down there with her sister. Definitely worth a wreck of, of watch. It's on Hulu. And then I think the sequel is on Prime, 47 meters down, uncaged. It's not related at all. It's just the same plot, but no cages because uncaged. And they're in the caves. It's like an underground um, cave system that they get stuck in with blind cave sharks, like the descent. It's like the descent, but shark. The 47 meters down uncaged recently came out, right? Yeah, like at like, least like, like 2018 like this, like, or no, not this year. Are you sure? Yeah. I feel like I saw the poster at the theater and not I'm this like, year. And I'm like, this title looks like a sequel, but I've never even 2019. heard of Man. Maybe COVID has just ruined my memory. It has, yeah, it feels like. Like, I remember (laughs) seeing the poster. I never saw a trailer. I saw a poster in the theater. They had a big cardboard cutout, and I'm like, is this movie a sequel? Because I've never heard of the original. (laughs) You never saw the original? It was, like, on a Netflix or something. I never heard of it. I'm like, are they doing a weird thing where they're just like, we're going to title our movie as a sequel when it's not? just to get people interesting like no one know what it means but it's provocative gets the people going like i didn't know if it was that marketing strategy it's cool uh, but yeah besides the reef my other favorite shark movie is deep blue sea i wait, just wait, 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 wait. <laughs> hold, 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 hold on this is your favorite movie no no it's, jaws is my favorite movie but my yeah. i said this might be b- Besides The Reef, this might be, I think it's number three, like close to my favorite shark movie. You're telling me this movie is in the top three. For shark movies, I think for sure. It's a classic. Okay. And it really holds up pretty well. And I just feel like it's a great movie. It's fun. It's got a great amount of action and horror and sharks. All right. Let, make your stuff. make your case. Make I case. just fucking did. Plus Thomas Jane and... LL Cool J, I'm obsessed with him in this movie. And the song that he sings afterwards, my head is like a shark fin. I don't know what it means, but I love it. And also Sam Jackson with one of the best surprise deaths of all time. And Thomas Jane, again, I, I feel like I've made my case five times over. Plus the bitch who's the, the main character dies at the end, thank God. And LL Cool J lives. And that's all I needed to know. That's Are, are you it, sure that's good. the case you want to make? I mean, are you sure you want to hand, are you sure you want to hand the floor over to me? I'm just saying that, like, I feel like that this movie has some fun kills. It's like the other shark movie that I have watched the most besides Jaws, because I just think it's really fun. It's like, obviously, it's so ridiculous at times. And there's some really bad effects with like special effects. But I think overall, like, it's a pretty great and fun movie. Like, I, I love it. It's one of my favorites. You really are you telling me you did not like this movie? Do you yield the floor? I feel like I'm scared to, but yeah. You should be. I feel like you're going to shit all over Deep Blue Sea, and now I'm worried about it. Really? Rewatching this, this was one of the worst movies I have ever what? seen. Are you kidding oh me? Oh my God. This, this movie was, wasn't fun. This was <laughs> terrible. Me, me and Sarah were. Oh, she watched were, it too. <laughs> we were. She came in halfway through and didn't miss a beat. There's zero plot. We we were. The plot bad. is basic. Very. Basic. We were That's bad all you watching need, this movie the whole time. I started this game. There's just one rule. It's whenever a character does something that doesn't make sense, you say, "What are you doing?" We said it every ten seconds. 
literally like <laughs> the entire movie we're just like what is going on like they all take way too long when the like glass is breaking <laughs> i always notice that i'm like they're all standing there going what's happening like they don't react well i'll give you that so i took a couple notes and then i just stopped because it was overwhelming <laughs> okay the, <laughs> the first th- are you telling me you didn't have fun watching this movie oh we had a good time <laughs> but like i will not rewatch this movie ever again based <laughs> off this like the first thing I'm like, what are you doing? Is the guy bites Daddy Skarsgård's arm off. I Skarsgård. like Skarsgård. I like yeah. Daddy Skarsgård. I like Daddy Skarsgård. There's so many of them now. At this point, he was the Skarsgård in yeah. 1999. Yep. But in this case, I'm going to call him Daddy Skarsgård. The shark bites his arm off. Thomas While Jane. While he's like smoking a fucking cigarette too. So the, the shark maybe <laughs> just wanted to smoke, but he just didn't know how to ask. That's it's the moral of the story. You They're should smart. Know- you genetically enhance sharks' brains to cure Alzheimer's, and they yeah. want to smoke. Obviously. So maybe they're not that smart. I mean, I feel um, like it was a very realistic plot. Okay. <laughs> I'm uh, kidding, obviously, <laughs> but yes, his death scene is was number one on my that, list that I want to discuss. The death scene so good. Was, was good. It was unnecessarily the, long and really, like... Like he died three times over, I thought. I mean, oh, yeah. It was like it he's was, dead, like, the first time with the oh. arm, and then he gets put on the helicopter, dropped into the water with the sharks. He's a goner. Then he's still alive being pushed by the sharks <laughs> through the glass. I'm that's like, the, this that's is the other part of this movie. I'm like, no one's good at their job. Like nobody. Yeah. He gets his arm bit off. He gets put on a shark. How a, you doing? A, a helicopter. The helicopter people, the emergency helicopter people don't know what they're, <laughs> what doing. they're doing. Yeah. The jack, him. <laughs> the, the jack they're pulling him up on fails and they're like let's just dip him in the water <laughs> and then the shark grabs it and you're like you know what let's just crash the helicopter into and the destroy watchtower everything because <laughs> if you watch the scene i re i literally re-watched, oh, I re-watched the- it multiple times i literally re-watched that scene before we started recording because i was like how did the entire top part of the ocean catch on fire right allegedly the shark dragged the helicopter into the watchtower but based off the structure, the shark couldn't drag them because there's nowhere to drag it to past the watchtower. So literally, the wa- the helicopter just like tilted and rolled into the yeah. watchtower, and then everything was on fire. But it's- but see, that's if you just you just can't focus on the little things in this you- movie. This is a movie where you're just like. That's Renee. the most hilarious death scene I've ever seen. I love that these sharks are like super fucking smart. And it's like, oh, they're not even trying to eat us the whole time. They're just trying to get us to let them out. And it's like, but also they're kind of trying to eat you, right? They're still fucking sharks. In this decade, that's intentional. Oh, yeah. In 1999, that's lazy as fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, well, I, yeah. So like they that whole scene is ridiculous. But so... Then they they take him up, but Thomas Jane's response to Daddy Skarsgård's arm getting bit off is he goes into the closet and grabs a shotgun and he's going to shoot the shark in, in the, the head. head. Yeah, smart. The shark, the shark that they just had a medical breakthrough. Yeah, but with. of course they're not. Gonna, he's like this thing's fucking evil. Okay, I I know. That's his whole through line the whole movie. He's trying to tell the main woman, hey, these sharks, I'm working with them every day. They're acting pretty fucking smart and crazy. They don't know the reveal yet at this point. As he grabs the shotgun. No, he doesn't. Well, he doesn't know that, but he knows that they're like smarter than normal sharks. Yeah, because he's a weird action hero character that has no story. A prison past and like, he's Tom Jane. I just like to think of it as like an extension of the Punisher. He's like the Punisher in one of his like alternate lives or something. And he works with sharks really well. It's the, it's the prequel, and he can he can dodge shark bites and hold his which breath we for lear- like ten minutes, which we <laughs> learn in like the first five minutes. He dodges a shark, and I'm like, yeah. "What?" And then he I does loved it again. That. Oh, I thought he that does, was cool. He does it again at the end. I'm like, "Okay," but anyway, he's gonna shoot the shark in the head, and then Smart. the girl who has never done a movie since this movie, yeah, she slaps the biggest red button to drop the shark in the tank. And it's like, okay, so no one knew that this button was here. Thomas Jane's reaction is I'm going to shoot this shark in the (laughs) head. (laughs) He's just like had it with these fucking sharks. The first one gets out and it's like taking down a whole boat by himself, just (laughs) testing his limits. And he's like, all right, these sharks gotta go. He's smart. (laughs) He's like the smart guy who's like, 
let's kill all the sharks. Then they'll never attack us. They'll never do anything. Like he's, I feel like he's onto this whole thing where he knows he's the only guy that I like in the movie. He's great. Well, I feel like, Renee, Besides you know, Sam Jackson and LL Cool J. You okay, know, the so only reason that he is the smart guy in the movie is because the movie is fucking dumb. That's, oh yeah that's, well that's... i love sam jackson's character and i love they do reverse the trope whenever someone it's like in a horror movie or anything like a disaster movie that there's any time for anyone to give an inspiring speech is ridiculous that like oh whatever's happening the sharks aren't gonna attack us during this little five minute like and it's such a cheesy speech that you just assume it's like one of those things and then when he gets eaten, you're like, oh, shit. Like, weren't you surprised? So here's the thing. I watched this and then I watched Jaws. Oh, well, that's not fair. No, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> no, listen, let, no let, hear me out. I thought this was bad when I watched it. I watched Jaws and then I hated this movie. But see, they, they can both exist and be okay. They can. Yeah, sure. And Democrats and Republicans can both exist. Doesn't mean that there's no bad guys. Okay. That's but, true. All right. Well, now I can't say, but <laughs> I will say, like, I love LL Cool J in this movie. Can I get a hell yeah for him? At least he's a great character. I love his whole thing. He's the best character in the movie. Wouldn't you agree? My last bullet point on the what are you doing subplot was LL Cool J parentheses everything. The entire he's movie. The best. He's so cool. He's so lovable. I didn't <laughs> want him to die. He does the de die hard thing in the oven with the shark and like blows it up like i love that and the parrot thing was hilarious it's like badass i was like oh my god i love this there's a part so where there's like a borderline like an intimate scene between him and the parrot i'm like what's when he what's... was feeding it whipped cream i don't think yeah i'm like we're what's... inferring something because i didn't no 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 there was one. there was fuck jams playing in the background Gross. That's okay. Literally... That's just what he was listening. I think he was listening to his own music <laughs> in the background, though. I swear, I thought it was like an LL Cool J song in the background. The funny thing I was going to mention about this is that Sam Jackson was originally offered the LL Cool J part, but his like people or his agent got back and said they don't like the idea of him playing a chef. <laughs> Which I was like, so then they rewrote, they created a new character of the CEO guy. And wrote it for him and then made the surprise death where he gets killed partway yeah. through. And Sam Jackson like loved it and was like, hell yeah. I'm I believe in. it. He he only had to be in half the movie. Last thing I have to say on LL Cool J, the cross that he wears is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Oh, like, I know. Like, it's you know, so me, I, grew, I grew up in a religious household, maybe not necessarily Catholic. That thing is enormous. <laughs> yeah, like, that's it really is. The, even for LL Cool J, a rapper, like yeah, that is who, the biggest. They wear big jewelry, but that's, that's still too big. <laughs> yeah, that even that's too big. I'm like, yeah. this is unreasonable. <laughs> but Samuel Jackson, I think, was my favorite part of this movie. He's amazing, and everything because, he does, even if he doesn't care. He's well, this great. is like this is like pre Samuel Jackson, like mm -hmm. before he was, like I. No, this is I'll, after Pulp Fiction. It is. Yeah, 94 was Pulp Fiction. So okay, it was 99. well, the, that kind of changes what I think of this. This is on the fly as I'm, as I'm thinking of this. The first half of this movie, I'm like, Samuel Jackson is trying to not be Samuel Jackson. He is trying to just be the most straight-laced person. Like, I, whenever he's, like, someone talking about stock prices, I'm like, you want to say fuck. Like, you want to say motherfucker. And he doesn't. I do. That's the one thing is that I wish he had, like, snakes of on a plane energy in this movie. Because I feel like he would have more fun with it. But that's oh, yeah. what makes it more surprising. I guess I would have been equally shocked if he just all of a sudden died in Snakes on a Plane when he's, like, the star. But... Yeah. I feel like I was very shocked when I first watched this movie. And that was like a big thing too, that, that yeah. everyone really liked. The, the, the other part of why Samuel Jackson is, is maybe the, the saving grace of this movie is because halfway through when all this, the weird shark stuff happens, Samuel Jackson turns into Samuel Jackson. Like mm -hmm. it's a very obvious switch in yeah. character. He starts, he just starts doing Samuel Jackson thing. And then he has the monologue and then he dies while he's giving the monologue. So good. But it's it's great, great scene. You tell me that's not a great, that's a great scene. No, it's a great scene. Yeah. But the one thing about <laughs> this movie that like I'm upset about is this had two of the like all time Hollywood cursors. You had mm -hmm. Samuel Jackson and Michael Rappaport. Who? 
He's 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 oh, the, the other guy. He's, he's the guy. With I know the ter- He's the guy with the terrible goatee. Yeah, I know him from Friends. What oh. is he all? What is he also oh. on? Renee, just look up his Instagram. Why? Because he he just he commentates on stuff. He just swears. Him and Samuel Jackson calling each other motherfuckers is a dream. And it was wasted on this yeah. movie. And well, it, this is like the same time that he was like on Friends. He like dated Phoebe for a while. That's the only thing I know him from. And I thought oh, he was pretty funny, but like this movie, yeah, I just like, I mean, he's just like a nothing character. Like, he, and plus, when he gets eaten, you're just like, I love how they have like him get cut in half and then the leg is like twitching. And I'm like, it still looks so fake, but they really like focused in on that leg twitching. Yeah. Like, hey, it's real. It's like, like that's not how it works we're not chickens sharks, like, <laughs> when they do come out of the water and they're using the practical effects don't you think they look pretty good sure okay 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 i'm gonna send you the, oh, I, go watch the wreck queen and tell me that no this no no is, this is not a comparison and of most the of the queen. other ones this this is a comparison of deep blue sea and jaws jaws had very uh, yeah, little they're not comparing was, i thought we were just talking <laughs> the scene where Daddy Skarsgård gets his arm bit off, I'm like, that is very obviously a prop because there's no body. It's just the head swiveling. Like, <laughs> It's so good. I just personally, <laughs> I think it's a fun movie. I don't, I literally have the lowest bar for a lot of horror movies. I think I'm just, I mean, wait till we get to the Jaws ripoffs next where it's like, basically jaws but insert animal here it's a different one each time and we're gonna have some real fun with it because i feel like we're just getting started on this category like sharks are only one part of it but some of these they're actually pretty damn good some of them pretty bad in the end i'm very thankful of deep blue sea Mm -hmm. not because i'm gonna watch it again but it's purely because of the dave Chappelle samuel jackson beer sketch Deep blue sea, they ate me. A fucking shark ate me. Frank Dix. <laughs> that little oh segment my God. alone <laughs> is worth the entire movie. That is amazing. I I love that. It is worth it because now you know the joke. That's like a big deal, right? Here's the biggest reason why I just don't like the movie. It, and this is purely a hindsight kind of thing. As I watched this movie, it was just very apparent that this movie was just ripping off other movies. This movie very clearly rips off Jaws, The Poseidon Adventure. Mm -hmm, Totally. Thomas Jane is just playing a mixture of every 70s and 80s action hero that doesn't have a backstory but can do really cool things. Totally. Yeah, like deep deep blue sea i'm just like literally nothing about this movie is original or even thoughtful and it's I'm just, fun i think it's fun for what i mean it's not like i'm comparing it to anything i mean except for the rest of these movies and they're all pretty questionable in their own ways i just let it slide as long as there's cool <laughs> shark action again this comes back to my for the new leatherface or texas chainsaw <laughs> movie i'm like is there some fucking is Leatherface in it? And is he cutting people up in some fun ways? That's really all I need. I'm very simple when it comes to horror movies. Jason, I need him with the machete and the mask and just killing people. I don't care. I just want him to go nuts. It's like he's the hero, right? For Jaws or any shark movie, I want some good shark kills. I'm not watching it to watch a couple fight and see nothing that happens under the water. Jaws at least gives us, I think, the perfect amount of shark for like withholding it because it still works really well but i'm just saying that's all i need and that movie i will say deep blue sea good shark kills everything you just said reminds me of a segment in new girl where schmidt he has a whole episode where he talks about his experience watching raiders of the lost ark and he is watching the nazis perspective he's like yeah and then he opens the arc and it kills the president. And then Nick is like, you watched a different movie than everyone else. Like, <laughs> you, <laughs> just, so you, weird. you just called the shark the hero. Like, <laughs> I'm not saying that he's the hero, but he's like the star. Like he's like the Tom Cruise, like at the like on in the trailer. I'm looking for like the shark. Like that's what I want to see. That's why I liked like the Meg in the trailers. They showed some really cool scenes with like the shark and like just the silhouette or like looking at it. And you're like, 
all right, I'm into it. It's like, that's what I'm here for. That's the star of the show. And as long as I get some good shark action, like that's why I bought, I mean, okay, I bought shark bait because I was like, it's like $5 to buy, $3 to rent. I'm buying this shit. And it had good shark kills, terrible everything else, but I'll forgive it because good shark kills. I think that's a good place to end it. Yeah, we'll continue we, with the rest of our we have so much more to, sharks. We have so much more to talk about, apparently. So. Apparently. Oh, I, believe me, we're just getting started. 